Now, I know that this scripture reading this morning is not your typical Advent scripture. So some of you may not have been fully prepared to hear this story from the book of Genesis this morning. But it seems to fit well with our Advent journey of walking in the dark. And I think it's a story that most of us can relate to. Have you ever been awake in the middle of the night? Anybody? Yeah, you've been awake in the middle of the night, right? Because you've got a situation that you're concerned about. You've got a decision you need to make. And neither choice is wrong, but which one is right? You had a fight, and you aren't quite sure how to fix it. And you're at a crossroads, and you aren't quite sure which way you should go. And then, even if you do fall asleep, it's not very restful, and you toss, and you turn, and you finally get up and clean the kitchen, or read a book, or watch whatever nonsense happens to be on the television at three in the morning. And so maybe the question isn't, have you ever been in this situation, but how often are you in this situation? This wrestling, this struggling, it can be so hard. It can be exhausting. And so in those moments, I think this story can be helpful to us. This story reminds us that God is in every moment, even these wrestling moments we sometimes refer to as the dark night of the soul. And in these moments, it sometimes can be really hard to recognize God's presence anywhere. And that's kind of where we find Jacob in this story that Brenda read for us this morning. Jacob is afraid. He is headed to meet with his brother Esau, and he is rightfully concerned that his brother is violently angry at him. They have had a tumultuous, tumultuous relationship since the moment they were born. Their relationship could rival a Kardashian reality show episode. And so, in the passage immediately before this one, Jacob prays to God. He says, save me, please, from the violence of my brother, my angry brother. I'm afraid he'll come and attack us all, me and the mothers and the children. And so to help alleviate and hold off his brother's wrath, he sends a series of gifts ahead. He even sends his wives and his servants and his children to the other side of the river to keep them safe during the night. This is how afraid Jacob is. And finally, we get to this passage Finally, when everything has settled down and is quiet, and Jacob finds himself completely alone and completely vulnerable, the wrestling match begins. All night long, amidst his fear and anxiety, God comes, and they struggle Jacob wrestles, I think, because he is so afraid of what is going to happen when he has this reunion with his brother. And I think maybe he was finally facing his fears. Perhaps he was even getting real about his own responsibility in this sometimes destructive relationship. And I think he was hoping for a new beginning, a new relationship with his brother and perhaps he was wrestling for a little bit of good news. And after his long night of wrestling, he finally gets his blessing. He gets a couple of blessings, actually. 
The first one is, he gets a new name. His wrestling partner says, your name is no longer Jacob. From now on, it is Israel, God wrestler. Because you've wrestled with God and you have come through. But then the other blessing was a bit more of a surprise that came a few hours later. Jacob's brother Esau came running to greet him, hugging him, kissing him with love and compassion. Esau greets his brother Jacob with joy. And this story can be a reminder to us that if we spend a little time wrestling with God, we just might be surprised when the morning comes. Because if Jacob had let his fear control him and hold him back, he would have never known the peace and the joy of reconciliation and the new relationship that he found with his brother. Now, isn't that so often the case? When we get honest with ourselves, when we face our fears, when we name things for what they really are, when we get real, only then do we get our blessing. Only when we engage in real, honest relationship do we find the wrestling match comes to an end. Because suddenly what we are wrestling with is less scary and more real, and things begin to change. I think Advent is a time for wrestling. Advent is about wrestling to figure out how we can bring Christmas into the world again this year. Advent is about wrestling with how we might prepare our hearts once again. Wrestling with how we will help birth Emmanuel into the world. Now, if you've ever given birth, or if you've ever been in the room during a birth, you know that it can be a bit of a wrestling match. And so each and every year, we must be the midwives of Christmas. We must make Christmas happen in the world. We must wrestle so that we may birth hope and peace and joy into the world in a new way for Christmas. And during this year, during Advent, I think we need to birth Christmas in a way that is more than tinsel and wrapping paper and ornaments and candy canes. Those things make for pretty Hallmark cards, but they aren't the real Christmas story. Think about it. Next week when our kids share with us the Christmas story, it'll be cute and it'll be wonderful, but I want you to really listen to the story, because the story is about a young teenager who finds herself pregnant and unmarried, and that is a very scary situation in which there is a lot of wrestling. And I think Mary needed to birth not only a baby, but Mary needed to light a candle for hope. It is a story of her fiance, who not only accepts this pregnant woman as his wife, but he takes her child as his own. And it seems to me that Joseph needed to birth a little peace into his life. And then on the night the baby is finally born, they're traveling and they're searching for a place to stay, a place that will welcome them. And once again, they face a struggle and a closed door. And then, to cap off this wonderful story, often told by Precious Moments figurines and peanut characters, there's a political demagogue trying to kill them, and so they have to leave the country, and they end up as refugees. Merry Christmas! Somebody sing joy to the world. Please, God, 
Somebody sing joy to the world. Because right here today, we too are wrestling. Humanity is wrestling with its dark night of the soul and how we are called to live together. And now, more than ever, we need midwives who will birth Christmas into the world. Even the Pope seems to be wrestling with how we celebrate Christmas this year. He said during a mass recently, we are close to Christmas and there will be lights, there will be parties, bright trees, even nativity scenes all decked out while the world continues to wage war. The world has not understood the way of peace. The whole world is at war. He went so far to call this holiday season a charade. And so perhaps our wrestling this Advent is more important than ever because perhaps we are wrestling for the very soul of Christmas. Because the world needs a little good news. And as we light the pink candle for joy, some are asking, where is the joy? Where is the joy? Episcopal priest Barbara Brown Taylor says, you can find joy in a depressed economy, a hospital waiting room, or in the middle of a war zone because the only condition for joy is the presence of God. Joy happens when God is present and people know it. Joy happens when God is present and we know it. So joy will show up and joy does show up because Emmanuel always shows up. God shows up in us. Christmas is all about joy showing up in the midst of the dark places. Joy shows up in the midst of refugees, in the middle of an airport in Canada. If you didn't see the pictures of the Canadian Prime Minister welcoming these Syrian refugee families, I send you home to see those pictures, and on the faces of those people, you will see joy amidst the horrible tragedies that they have been living in. Joy does indeed show up in war zones. An army chaplain tells the story about her tour in Iraq and the moments of joy that she had the privilege to experience even in the midst of horrific circumstances. Joy would show up in her service dog, Truvy. She and Truvy would fly out to the most remote parts of the Iraqi desert, and the dog would play fetch. Soldiers and Marines, ever at death's door, just got a few moments of normal playing with that pup. Joy would show up in the green zone, in the middle of Baghdad, when the congregation with whom this chaplain partnered would send monthly care packages and the soldiers and Marines began to learn that good news of great joy was inside that box with that funny red wine glass that is the symbol for the Christian Church Disciples of Christ on the top. And when they would see that chalice, they would run to find the chaplain because they knew there was good news of great joy inside. And did you see the story just yesterday in the star of our friends up at Grace and Holy Trinity Cathedral? A few weeks ago during the Muslim feast of the sacrifice, parking got a little bit crazy in downtown. And the cathedral opened up their parking lot to try to help. And a certain Kansas City Chiefs football player happened to find himself parked in the spot that is normally reserved 
for the dean of the cathedral. And after their worship service, Chief Safety Hussein Abdullah went inside to thank the dean for his gracious hospitality. And they shared a conversation and a new relationship, a new beginning was formed. And when I finished the article, I couldn't help but wonder who found more joy from that encounter? The Islamic community who found such welcome and hospitality, or the dean who got to provide a little joy and now has 30 youth group kids attending the Chiefs game here this afternoon as a thank you. That's what I mean by giving, lighting a candle for joy. In the moments you least expect them, when anxiousness and fear surround, so often joy shows up and surprises us if only we are open to her presence. I joined a couple clergy colleagues this week, and on your behalf, I extended a note of love and support to our Islamic brothers and sisters here in the city. You see, I had been wrestling a bit. What can I do? What can we do? We who in 1939 found our building burned to the ground and who reached out to us with love and support, our Jewish brothers and sisters, so it seemed only fitting that we reach out with love and support. It was one small way that I felt that we as a congregation could make a little hope and a little peace and a little joy more real in the world this Christmas. It was one way that we could share a little good news. And if we are truly going to celebrate Christmas this year, then we better get busy sharing good news. Otherwise, we may indeed make Christmas a charade. So we better share a little joy. And we may have to wrestle during this Advent season so that we can light the world with good news in just a few short days. How can you do a little wrestling this week? How can you find some time to sit in the dark? As we've done each week, I'm going to give you a moment to practice sitting in the dark so that you can experience a little wrestling. I challenge you this week to spend some time in the darkness making yourself completely vulnerable so that God can surprise you with a joy moment this year? How do you need to wrestle so that you can find a new relationship that brings you joy? How do you need to wrestle a little bit so that you are better prepared to open your heart to the birth of Emmanuel? As the lights come down, the pink candle is the candle of joy. How can you open your hearts to her flame? How can you share her in the dark places of the world? My friends, during this Advent season, I pray that we may have the courage to wrestle because if we do, our Christmas blessing may be more than we can ever imagine. May it be so. May it be so for us. Amen.